Hi, um, my name is Naomi Subotnik, and this summer I've been working on two projects, one about theater in 19th century Brazil, and the other about the American postmodern dancer Anna Halperin. I'll start by explaining a little bit about the theater project. So Professor Zephyr Frank is working on a book which analyzes novels and plays from 19th century Brazil. Rather than use literature purely as historical evidence, the book seeks to understand the literature itself through its historical context. Focusing on the narratives presented by these works of fiction and theater, the book explores the moral and social conflicts that characters experience as they navigate 19th century Rio de Janeiro. Included in the book is the full translation of a play called Luxury and Vanity. It was decided that this play should be illustrated, and I've been working on these illustrations over the course of the summer. Considered as a piece of literature, Luxury and Vanity is objectively speaking not a good play. <laughs> Taking place in 1860 in Rio de Janeiro, it tells the story of a family of modest means who attempt to become part of high society, borrowing money and lying about their relations in order to do so. This family, a father, a mother, and their daughter, are deeply in debt, living a life of luxury that they can ill afford. The couple's only hope is to marry their daughter off to a rich man. When a moralizing uncle arrives from the countryside, he learns of the false life his relatives are leading, exposes their pretensions, and saves his niece from an unhappy marriage. The melodramatic plot includes an attempted abduction and a foiled suicide. Yet, despite the melodrama, the interactions between individual characters reveal important truths about the social fabric of 19th century Rio de Janeiro. So over the course of the summer, I've been working on illustrating this play. The goal of illustrating the play is twofold. First, it is practical as illustrations provide a visual aid for the reader. Additionally, unlike a novel, which describes the social interactions between characters through descriptive language, the interactions of a play consist of the attitudes, gestures, and dialogue performed in real time by actors on the stage. The hope is that the illustrations might help the reader to picture the embodied performance of the play. Um, with this background, um, I'll now explain how I went about making the illustrations. So I began by looking at some newspaper images from 19th century Brazil. And working from these, I tried coming up with some possible characters and settings. I also checked out a few books on illustrated Shakespeare plays from the library um, and spent some time sketching from the pictures in these books, trying to get a sense of what dramatic or theatrical poses might look like in drawn form. But I was feeling stuck in terms of developing the characters, so I began sketching historical portraits in order to come up with some ideas. I spent some time doing this kind of visual research, looking at old photographs and sketching portraits of people from the 19th century. Working from the sketches I'd made of these photographs, I then tried to evolve these historical portraits into characters of my own. Um, and these are some examples of how I started with a sketch I'd made from a photograph um, and slowly worked on it, um, trying to make an individual character. Um, so there's a few of these. Um, as I was working on these images, I also was experimenting with some different materials, um, including watercolors and pen and ink. So there's some pen and watercolors. And the characters that I eventually settled on are here. Although the illustrations are meant to be depictions of theatrical scenes and not necessarily period replicas, I did want to make them as accurate as possible. Um, so throughout the process of drawing, I researched visual elements as they came up. For example, I did some research about the fashionable dresses and hairstyles of the 1860s. And as there's a scene which takes place in a botanical garden, I also looked up some of the kinds of plants that grow in Brazil and drew them just in order to become familiar. In addition to developing the characters, I also wanted to think about the compositions of the illustrations. I decided to compose the drawings like Victorian vignettes and looked at 19th century book illustrations for um, inspiration. Um, and there are some illustrated versions of Charles Dickens' books that were particularly helpful. When I began trying to illustrate the scenes, my first inclination was to work on them one by one, making one fully finished and detailed illustration moving around to the next. Um, and some of the examples of those um, attempts are here on the screen. However, I, after some attempts at making these fully detailed illustrations, I realized that this approach really wasn't working. So I went back to the list of scenes to be illustrated, chose one scene from each of the five acts of the play, 
and made several thumbnail drawings for each scene. And then I looked at all the possibilities that I'd come up with and chose two or three that seemed the most successful. Then I scanned these and printed out copies and then cut them out and assembled them and reassembled the possible compositions until I had a set that seemed to work well together as a whole. And from here, I made larger sketches of each and worked on them as a set, making sure that they were all being built up at relatively the same pace. This helped me not to get too focused on the particular details of one drawing, and it helped me to keep, to keep the memory of the images um, or a set of illustrations that would all be comparing together. So um, here are three examples of how I um, a thumbnail an image um, to a larger sketch of the composition and then um, more detailed and finished drawings, which I'm still finishing up. Um, I also have the idea to make um, a small header illustration um, to be placed at the beginning of each of the five acts of the play, which would depict some symbolic element from that particular act. Um, so these are some examples of the images I've been working on. Uh, for example, in the first act, the uncle arrives from the countryside um, to the fancy house in Rio de Janeiro, and he's wearing these big dusty boots. So I thought that that might be a fitting illustration for the beginning of the first act. So that's a brief summary of the theater project, um, and I'll explain a little bit about the Anna Halpern Dance Scores project. Anna Halpern is an American dancer who has made significant contributions to this modern dance, pioneering ideas about dance as a participatory healing and community art. Moving away from dances for more positivity in front of an audience, Anna Halpern has worked to define a new kind of performance art. Working with visual artists in the past few years, Anna Halpern has taken more of the dance and the dance scoring to record her dances. Scoring involves di diagramming the movement of a dance. However, rather than lay out a strict choreography for dancers to follow, the scores are intended to provide a framework of actions within which dancers make decisions about their own movements. Part of the process of developing the dance itself, these scores are also intended to make the dance individually accessible, and they're also simply interesting works of art in and of themselves. The goal of our project at has been to try to digitize these scores. We are working with the Museum of Performance and Design in San Francisco, which holds an important archive of Anna Halpern's work. And we're currently focusing on digitizing several existing scores of one of Anna Halpern's dances called Planetary Dance. And this is an example of one of the scores of Planetary Dance. This one is on six different cards um, and includes um, abstract um, images that show where and how the dancers should move um, with, over the course of the dance. Um, so although we're focusing just on this one for now, the hope is that as the project develops, more of Anna Halpern's scores for her different dances will be included in the scope of the project. So the project is in its very beginning stages, so most, much of the work this summer is about really the basic concept for it. One of the main questions we can find to us is this a purely documentary digital archive of Anna Halpern's work, or might it be a creative project in and of itself? We decided to experiment with developing it into a creative project. So I began by reading about Anna Halpern, watching documentary films about her work, and doing some online research. And then I helped to come up with some preliminary ideas <coughs> about how the score might be digitized. For example, I imagined making the digitized score into a kind of an interactive dictionary, where you might click on a symbol in the score and then see a video of dancers performing the movement that it notates, or you might see a video interview of Anna Halpern talking about the particular part of the dance. Another idea was to develop an archive, which would focus on the history of all the places where planetary dance has been performed, as it is a dance that's performed annually in multiple locations around the world. Um, and the third idea, um, as it is one of Anna Halpern's goals to spread the dance around the world, um, was to make the digital website into a kind of um, how-to manual, which would um, detail how we work on um, a performance of planetary dance online. <laughs> These are just um, some of the sketches I made as I was working on these early ideas. Um, in addition to brainstorming some ideas about digitizing the score, I also made some preliminary drawings of dancers in motion from online photographs of Anna Halpern's dance company, just to get a sense of the kind of movement that she's interested in. So after initial work had been done, Zephyr Brain, Eric Steiner, myself, and Maria Monterey from the Museum of Performance and Design in San Francisco met and discussed the direction of the project. After this meeting, we made a concept for the project, which was to digitize the score into a three-part website. The website would include audio, the score animated movement across the screen, and an interactive element. 
the videos of the user of the website after, after having listened to music or spoken narrative related to the score and after having spent some time looking at the score itself could then choose from a menu a statement expressing their personal involvement in the dance. The statement would be in the form of I danced for and then whatever they felt personally connected to. Um, so for example, um, after having selected an option such as I danced for healing or I danced for a bird, um, the sketches would animate on the screen. The hope was that this would allow a web user to imagine how a statement or emotion might be embodied in dance. And then the website would allow a greater number of people to have access to the score while also allowing them to imagine how a body might move in space in reaction to an emotion, feeling, or memory. So I began sketching these answers in motion and thinking about the three when I danced for statements. My goal here um, was really just to come up with many different possibilities for how these sketches might look because the project was and still is really in its beginning stages. Um, so I experimented with many different kinds of materials. Um, I used crayon, pencil, and um, and I experimented with many different methods of drawing, um, sometimes using thick, um, dark lines and more abstract forms, um, and sometimes using pencil or pen and maybe more detailed illustrations. One challenge I did face when I was working on these is that I didn't actually have a dancer to draw. Um, so I looked at photographs and videos um, of dancers trying to get a sense of how bodies move in space. Um, I also drew from Edward Mybridge's 19th century photographs, um, which are part of his work about human and animal locomotion. Um, so during this time, I also went up to San Francisco to talk with Mario Lefrey at the Museum of Performance and Design, um, and she helped me look at some archival materials. Then at the beginning of August, we had a chance to meet with Anna Halpern and her daughter, Daria Halpern, in person at her home and studio in Marin. The meeting was instructive and interesting and helped direct to the next stage of the project. It seemed that although Anna Halpern was very interested in the possibility of digitizing her work, she and her daughter were also concerned about preserving her artistic legacy and had some reservations about the direction of our project. There was a tension between our desire to develop a creative project and the need to preserve our artistic legacy. I learned important information about collaboration and the manner in which a project such as this unfolds. So moving forward, our goal is to work more closely with photographs and other documentation from actual performances of planetary dance. So the two projects presented me with very different sets of challenges, and I learned a great deal from working on each of them. In the future, I'm looking forward to developing a more varied set of images for the 19th century play, Luxury and Vanity. And then I'm also excited about the possibilities for collaboration that have been opened up by the Anna Halpern Dance Scores project. Thanks very much.